Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the FBX Mesh 3D node. So we're going to jump into Fusion and we are pretty much going to be doing the same thing with this FBX node that we did with the Alembic Mesh 3D node yesterday. So we're going to use the same little model from Blender. So let's go ahead and hit Shift Space, type FBX Mesh 3D. We're going to add that. And again, before you start adding these, uh, make sure you go ahead and save anything you've done because they do have a habit of uh, shutting DaVinci Resolve down. So we're going to bring in our FBX and we're going to connect it to our 3D node. And right off the bat, you can see it's gigantic. So first thing we want to do is go to our controls and change our size. So. We can bring that way down. And uh, 0 0.01 will bring it back to your uh, normal size that we had in uh, Blender. So let's go ahead and transform that back. And we have the typical transform options that we have in all of our other 3D nodes. So let's look at that from the top and make sure we're centered on the light. And let's go to our render node. So you can see we have got our uh, little 3D mesh. But if you notice, we don't have any animation on it. So we can jump back into controls. And we have our FBX file name, our object name, if it is named. And we have these take names. And what take names are is instances of animations. But as you see, we have none listed here. And it lists our streams, which is our position or our float of our overall image, our normals, and our UV map, which we really didn't export out. But we have no take names to actually change our animation. And uh, we'll come back to that. But underneath, you've got visibility, lighting, map, blend mode, normals, and tangents, and your object ID. And if we go to our uh, little 3D and double check, we do have our normals. And we do have our tangents. And if we jump into material, we also have the option to change the overall color of everything. And we have our specular transmittance and material ID. And as I said, we have all the typical transforms that we have on all our 3D nodes. And again, we can uh, bring in some media. And uh, color our... Uh, little sphere there or our little shape but we don't have any animation so like i said yesterday with the limbic mesh this is the animation bringing it into your actual nodes is always an issue so we can disconnect that so let's go ahead and select fusion import fbx scene and we're going to import our uh, little FBX scene. And we have a, another pop-up window to ask what we want to bring in. And we want to bring in our hierarchy. We want our animation. I don't have any cameras, therefore I don't have any inverse transforms. I don't have any lights. I'm going to bring in any, any nulls or meshes themselves with all their data. And I'm going to bring in materials too. And under animation, we can select whether it's no animation or whether we want to use the animation that's assigned to our cube, which is the only place I add animation. Under our units, we can convert up access to Y and we can scale the file by this number. And I'm going to go ahead and put 0 0.01 right here so it automatically scales when we bring it in. And I'm going to hit OK. So if I find our little nodes here, I can bring them up. We'll bring them over. And let me uh, move some of this stuff around. 
so we can see what's going on. So what it did is it brought in our actual shapes. So we've got our cylinder, all three cylinders, our sphere, and then our cube. And it did bring it in a little different than our uh, Alembic mesh 3D node or import did. But it brought all of our shapes in. And additionally, it brought these materials into our shapes. So all these nodes going into this pink input is our material from our uh, blender file but they're not the exact material i can promise you that but we've got a merge node and then we've got a root node out so this root node out is what we want to use to uh, move our entire mesh around so this is basically your root and if you notice it gave us uh, some keyframes up here so if you want you can go ahead and clear all these out because these have nothing to do with anything. For some reason, it just writes a keyframe up front. And let's go ahead and bring our root node into our merge node. So let's look at our merge. And you can see that automatically scaled it down for us. We can go to our root node and we can bring it back under our light. If you pop, make sure we're under our light. There we go. If we go to render node, you can see we've got our render and we've got our uh, materials assigned ish <laughs> materials assigned from Blender and we've got our animation. So if we jump into say our cylinder material, you can see we've got uh, options to change this material. And all this really did is it kind of guesstimated from the material we assigned to assign it to a fusion material. So these are the only options we have. We don't have all the additional stuff that we have in Blender for our materials within our shader nodes. Well, we do, but we will go over those later when we start going over textures. But if you need to, you can come in here and change the color of all your uh, little cylinders if you want. We can... Uh, up the intensity of our specular, bring that down so it's a little shinier. Let's go ahead and change our sphere as well. Go to our specular, make it a shiny. There we go. So within each of our shapes, if we go to our cylinders, we've got all of our typical visibility, lighting, matte, blend, normals, objects. We can also change the size here, but we did that within our uh, import. When we imported it, automatically changed that size to scale it down for us. Under our material, we can go through and change these materials, but these are separate than these materials. So. For example, if I was to change this to, uh, say, a darker black, you notice nothing's going to happen because we've got material signed. But if I disconnect it, it just changed to black. And we'll plug that back into our material. And then under transform, we can transform these independently if you want. But mind you, these are keyframed but you can change them independently if you need to. So additionally, if we go to our nodes and we uh, look up here, we have our object name, which was cube, and we have our take name. And remember when we selected that animation and that first pop-up, this is the take name we selected. So this is our actual animation. So if there is multiple animations in there that we could have selected, these will have little drop downs for us to select the different animations. And again, our streams are just simply that data that that brought in with our position, our normals and our UV maps. So we can map these materials correctly. So that is the FBX mesh 3D node and the fusion import FBX scene option. So I will see you in the next note breakdown.